What's up everybody, Matthew here. Thanks for checking into the YouTube channel. Listen, I need to make a correction on a previous video I just posted. A couple days ago, I made a tier chart about some of the most useful books in Christian history, and I neglected to put Pilgrim's Progress on that list. Can you believe it? And you corrected me on that. You called me on it in the comments, and probably the place I should have put it is on the bottom row instead of C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Now, listen, I love them both. I've read them both to my kids out loud, and both of them have had a great impact, but you're right. Pilgrim's Progress has had the greater lasting impact in the history of the church, and in fact, in the history of, well, the world, to be honest. It's the second best-selling book of all time next to the Bible. But in this video, what we're going to do if my technology works, as we're going to be looking at some of the comments of Russell Moore. He's a Baptist pastor and political commentator. As he discusses this particular book, Pilgrim's Progress, and John Bunyan more broadly, and the works of the Puritans even more broadly than that, with Karen Swallow Pryor, who is a literature professor. And I have to tell you, I completely disagree with their assessment here of these works. Now, I'm not bashing them. I'm not here to smash on them. I'm simply saying that they have their opinion and I have mine. And I hope that you would join me in my opinion and disagree with their opinion. So nevertheless, let's have a look at what they recently said here and tell me if they are not crazy off base with their assessment here. Listen to this. I don't like John Bunyan. Uh, I, 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 like the, I like the person of John Bunyan. I like the life of John Bunyan, but Pilgrim's Progress leaves me cold. Okay, stop right there. Totally agree with you about the life of John Bunyan. Who wouldn't be inspired by the life of John Bunyan? He is a nonconformist English pastor in a time of great persecution. In fact, Bunyan was the favorite preacher of theologian John Owen. Owen said he loved the tinker preacher. Bunyan's actual occupation was he fixed pots and pans, is pretty humble calling. But he was an incredible preacher, and he suffered seriously for the sake of the gospel in his Christ-exalting, Bible-believing views. In fact, a number of times he was imprisoned and was even offered release out of prison if he would agree to stop preaching the gospel, which, of course, he could not do in good conscience. He wrote Pilgrim's Progress, and this, Russell says, leaves him cold. Now, I find that very hard to believe because the experience of almost every other Christian who's read the book Pilgrim's Progress is that it is absolutely thrilling. It's an adventure story. It's an analogy of the Christian faith. I've read it to my kids. My kids loved it. We taught through it here at our with our children's group at Gospel Fellowship PCA. I've almost never met anybody that's had this particular kind of gut-level, visceral response to Pilgrim's Progress. This I find entirely shocking. Let's continue as we listen to his comments here. And uh, grace abounding to the chief of sinners even more so. And I, I think... Not true. Not true. Grace abounding to the chief of sinners is Bunyan's own story of his conversion. It is absolutely alluring. You will love it if you read it. He completely acknowledges the, 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 his heart. He opens his heart. He opens the door. If you could crack open your chest and say, here is my heart. That's what Bunyan does in Grace Abounding. He acknowledges temptations that you and I have probably experienced. He acknowledges doubts that you and I have been through. He struggles with his faith in the same way that Christian struggles throughout the journey in Pilgrim's Progress. I think you would find it deeply enriching to the soul, but Russell Moore does not agree with that. Because I've seen so many people who started reading some Puritan literature from that time period who became so morose and um, and so introspective and, and believing there's no way they could really be a Christian uh, and, and all of the tests that they were giving to themselves, then they would test whether or not they had the objectivity to go through the tests, you know, all of that. that. That Puritan era, I think, brought some things that just really uh, creep me out. Okay. Creep me out. No way. <laughs> no way. Now, okay, let me acknowledge some ground of concession here because I do have viewers to this channel, commenters, people who email me who do find the Puritans a little bit morose. They are very self-introspective and I certainly can't deny that, but that's only because they have a huge, glorious, magnanimous view of God and a very weighty, grave view of sin and death 
and hell. That is certainly true. If you read, for instance, David Brainerd's journals, I can acknowledge to you that some people will, will interpret that as morose. He's constantly acknowledging his unworthiness, his sin. He despairs very often. And yet, why is it that so many other Christians besides our generation have found that book entirely motivating? David Brainerd's journals were, in fact, one of the impetuses, is that the right plural, for the modern missionary movement. People like William Carey and Adoniram Judson and Hudson Taylor, they were reading David Brainerd's struggles on the mission field as he preaches the gospel to the Native Americans, and they were actually inspired by the struggle. I think the disconnect here is that in modern evangelicalism, for so many of us, our faith is a mile wide and it's only an inch thin. We haven't really considered the profundity of our own sin, the absolute necessity that we have of the gospel, the reality of God's sovereign power and his all arching providence over all things, the clarity in which we, we really do need the word of God as the lamp unto our feet and the light, light unto our path, and the vigorousness of the struggle that we have with Satan, the world, and the flesh. And so, yeah, some people, some evangelicals are rightly kind of shocked by this. And when you read Pilgrim's Progress, this analogy of how Bunyan has to fight the devil he has to fight battles within his own heart. He has to decry and disdain the world, which is pictured as Vanity Fair. Some of these things are quite vivid to the modern person who's kind of used to coming into church and getting this sort of glib, happy, cheerleading kind of a message in which really the only gospel that you get is you're okay and I'm okay and we all just need to love ourselves and discover ourselves just a little bit more. But no, the Puritans are very, very rich in their examination. In fact, if I have time today, I want to make a video about Puritan preaching, the use of application, because in Puritan preaching, the use of self-examination or trial is one of the main applications. The Puritans were always preaching messages that believers should peer into their own hearts. Now, sometimes that did get a little bit rigoristic, and I will fully acknowledge that. Jonathan Edwards, for instance, had a pretty significant debate with his own father, who kind of held to the more rigorous morphology of salvation, which is to say that believers, before they can give testimony of their saving grace to the elders and be permitted to the table of communion in the church, they would have to be able to explain how they labored under the law and they found themselves to be completely empty of all hope. Uh, it's that picture in Pilgrim's Progress where a Christian is trying to climb Mount Sinai, but he, falls at, he, he finds it falling on top of himself instead. And so, yeah, this is shocking to some modern readers, and some have been off-put by the rigorous self-examination that the Puritans uh, would, would labor to convey. Let's listen in a little bit further here. But you, you talk about in the book just how significant uh, Pilgrim's Progress is. Uh, really was in terms of shaping uh, shaping everything around us, which I don't think I'd ever thought about before. I mean, I knew it was uh, at one point the most popular uh, book other than the Bible, but I didn't really think about how the story actually changed the way we see things. Okay, and so I think what he's talking about here is the way Pilgrim's Progress gives us a map, let's say, for our lives. Because if you've read Pilgrim's Progress, what you know, you, you know this, that it's an adventure story in which Christian, the protagonist, makes an extended journey from the city of destruction all the way to the gates of paradise itself. Along the way, he has to discover the truth of the gospel. He has to fight off Satan. He has to experience a number of trials and temptations, both from without and from within. Meanwhile, he finds hope in his friendships with hopeful and faithful, and they experience some great perturbations of soul as they go through. And what this does is it gives us a map to put our own conversion story onto. And what we see when we read Pilgrim's Progress is that it does give us this kind of extended metaphor as the, of the Christian faith as something like a journey. And this is exactly why I think so many people find it helpful and not morose or creepy or dry or dull or whatever else they're going to say about this particular book here. I think many people have found that as Bunyan describes the journey through this metaphor of pilgrimage, that that is exactly what they have likewise experienced in their own Christian faith. So he tells this story from the first person perspective in uh, Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners, but he tells it analogously through Pilgrim's Progress, which is exactly why I think so many people have found their own lives enriched by reading this book. Let's hear what the professor has to say now. 
going to be completely honest here. I mean, the Pilgrim's Progress is kind of a drag to read. I mean, as no, no, false, wrong, totally wrong. It's thrilling. It's encouraging. It's exciting. Every scene is action packed. There is no scene in this entire book in which the doctrine is not richly within the very story fabric itself. Bunyan is constantly teaching reformed doctrine, the doctrines of grace, by way of this elaborate, gloriously depicted, bright colored, vivid story. I cannot see how anybody could rightly interpret this book as a, a drag. I just totally disagree with the professor here. You know, even teaching it, my stu- you know, my students love to hate it and I love to teach it to try to, you know, hate it with them and help them see it. And I'm so glad. Hate it with them and help them to see it. Now, I sense here that there's a little bit of tongue in cheek happening. There's some smiles on their faces here. I think they realize they're talking in a way that's somewhat avant garde to uh, m- many Christians throughout the generations here. They're saying something that's a little bit fun and kind of cheeky here, but hopefully they don't really believe it. What do you think? actually that I came to it as a student of literature before, you know, more than a Christian. I mean, I was a Christian, but I, I approached it as literature. Okay. Well, let's leave it for what it is right there. There's the video. There's their comments. A lot of people talking about on Twitter and online. I just want to say here, though, how richly I have benefited from the, the from the book Pilgrim's Progress. And all I can say to you is if you're a pastor, if you are the head of household, if you're a single believer, if if you are finding yourself on the pilgrim way of Christianity with all of the struggles of the world, the flesh, the devil, I cannot commend almost any book to you higher than I can commend Pilgrim's Progress. I'm going to post a link in the description of this video to one of the best uh, full color, beautifully depicted versions of Pilgrim's Progress, the one done by Crossway. It's probably the best on the market. Check it out and let me know. By the way, before I sign out, I would love to hear your thoughts on my take and on their take. We're doing a friendly disagreement here. What do you think about Pilgrim's Progress? Please let me know. Thanks for checking into this channel and this video. I do love you lots and we'll talk to you later.